All right, hey you guys, it's Coco giving you Let's Be Real TV. We're doing something different today. Today I have with me Kenny B. You know, let people know who you are if they don't really know about you. I'm Kenny Brown. I'm a graduate of here at Winston-Salem State University in 2015. I currently am at uh, Florida International University getting my master's degree in higher education administration from Washington, D.C. That's me. Yes. Okay, cool, cool. So, Super Bowl goals, the motto, what exactly is it? So, I started Super Bowl goals, I would say I started saying it maybe this summer. Um, and I heard it somewhere. I won't say like I just woke up one day and created this Super Bowl goals. I heard it from uh, Jay Z's 444 album. You know, he starts Ooh. Family Feud off. Yeah. Super Bowl goals. So I was like, it resonated with me because when you think about it, when I hear Super Bowl goals, what I envisioned was when I was, what, seven years old and I seen Tom Brady win his first championship. Mm -hmm. And like he grabbed his head like this and like couldn't believe what he's just accomplished. Mm -hmm. That's what I see. Every time I say Super Bowl goals, mm -hmm. every time I hear Super Bowl goals, like that's what I envision. The feeling you get when you accomplish something you've been working for or been working towards all your life for a specific period of time. So, mm -hmm. you know, one day, whatever it is you want to be, that's your Super Bowl goal. Ooh. And I say Super Bowl goals every day to remind myself and to try to push the message forward to remind other people, like, that's how in goal, that's what we're going to be. Mm -hmm. We all going to be Tom Brady holding our hands on our head, yeah. working towards that Super Bowl goal of ours. That's real. It's like, sure. you, it's crazy that you like caught that and it has so much like a bigger meaning than, you know, just chasing your dreams and just doing what you love and everything. Yeah, you know, and beyond chasing our dreams, we got to chase it with intent. Yeah. You know, every every move has to be calculated. We have to do everything for a certain reason. And that's our Super Bowl goal. Right. Vision Tom Brady. I encourage everybody to go look right. up that video of Tom Brady after he <laughs> won his first Super Bowl. He does like this before he even holds up the trophy, so that's what Super Bowl goals is. Right. Okay, so talk about Super Bowl goals. I know you did your 120 pound weight loss, so sure. elaborate more on that. Like, that is amazing, 120 pounds. Like, you deserve to be on television, <laughs> telling your story about that. We gotta get, that. The, we gotta get the message across, we gotta yeah. get me out there. Right. Bit. But um, I lost it. I lost 120 pounds. Um, I didn't know how remarkable it was at the time. I did it in six months. Wow. So, you know, I started off with like 340 pounds in January. Mm -hmm. And then I would say, what, in August, September, -ish, I got to like 220, 225. Mm -hmm. um, really? I know it sounds simple, but it was pure dedication and will. Mm -hmm. um, far more than me seeing the results. Like, I didn't see the results mm -hmm. when other people started seeing them. Because, you know, like, I look at me every day. Yeah. I've looked, like, I'm 24 now. I mean, I guess when I was losing the weight, I was 23. So I've looked at me for the past 23 years of yeah. my life to that point. So I didn't immediately see the results. Mm -hmm. Of course, you know, I had other people like, oh, you know, your face is trimming. You know, I didn't even focus on that. Mm -hmm. You know, you know I, I can tell like I buttoned up my dress shirts a little better. Yeah. But, um, I didn't immediately see the, the results. So mm -hmm. to me, it was pure dedication and will. Right. Um, I set my goal on losing weight and I had like a, a, a Epiphany to lose weight. I was in sacks. I tell everybody this, you know, I believe in being as open and honest as possible. Mm -hmm. I was in sacks and um, I couldn't fit nothing. And no. I said, you know what, I'm about to leave sacks. Let me go to Polo. Yeah. <laughs> Polo got a little bit, and I couldn't really fit nothing in. Like my selection, my choice selection was like too small. And that's not the type of life I've lived prior to that. Mm -hmm. And that's not the type of life I wanted to live moving forward. And then, you know, I didn't feel right walking and stuff like that. So it was time to make a change. And I've always wanted to lose weight for a while. And when that happened was just like the, you know what, trigger, like, you know, the bullet hit. Right. It's time to do it. You know, I made a call, phone call to a friend of mine, and, you know, since that day, I just told myself, I locked in with myself, I made a promise to myself that I was going to get it done. Right. So I did whatever I needed to do to get it done. I cut certain, I cut certain foods off. Um, I worked out way more. Mm -hmm. um, it's just purely like I gave, a, I gave a side of myself up. And that's what it takes when you, I think, when you want to do weight loss. Um, right. I really took it in as a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Some I want, like I would love people to realize when it comes to losing weight. People say they're going on a diet. Mm -hmm. Nah, like, F the diet. Yeah. It's a lifestyle. Because mm -hmm. you got to make it, it's your life. Mm -hmm. um, we got to look at it. We're both black. You know, um, the number one killer with the, you know, black people, once we get to a certain age, is heart disease. Mm -hmm. um, I was looking up a stat a couple weeks ago. Once we get over 60, like 45, what is it, like 40% of us 
and die because of heart disease or cardiovascular disease or strokes or something. I didn't want that to be me. Um, there was people I've known, people I've known through people that's been dying like at 30 and 40 mm -hmm. from heart attacks, from strokes, you know, that's getting diabetes. Right. You know, and I think if I was to continue going in the past, I, that would have been me. Mm -hmm. And that's not how I see my life and then I see my story in me. Yeah. So that was another factor to it. And I want everybody, all men that look like us, all women that look like us to be understanding like, yeah, food good. Mm -hmm. Sunday, our grandmother sold food good and we can mm -hmm. eat it. But during the week, we got to portion it out to build up for that. Right. And that's why I don't call the way I eat a diet. Mm -hmm. When I was even losing weight, I didn't call it a diet because mm -hmm. it's a lifestyle. Yeah. People talking about cheat days. Like, What's a cheat day? It's your right. life. Mm -hmm. You know, so if me and you finish this interview right now and you say, Kenny, like, who was your favorite spot in Winston? And I say, Coco, I love going to Cheddar's and I love the, the, the chocolate chip cookie with the vanilla ice cream. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, and I'm going to eat it. And it's mm -hmm. not going to be a cheat meal. Why? Because it's my life. Like, right. I'm allotting this in my lifestyle. So if I eat this today, I know tomorrow morning I'm gonna go run my three to four miles, but at night I'm probably running. I'm gonna run two to three more extra miles, mm -hmm. and maybe eat like some kale throughout the day, some more fruits throughout the day, and not eat not eat anything heavy because I did allow myself to eat that. Mm -hmm. So for everybody that's out there looking to lose weight, or I would encourage you to not call yourself a diet. Like really look at it, look at it as your lifestyle, right. and the results gonna come. Right. You know. Be patient. For sure. Wow. That's a deep story, boy. That's a deep story. <laughs> I mean, you just gotta look at things when it comes, you know, put it in perspective. You need to write a book about like your weight loss. And write a just book. Really... I don't know. I always wanted a book like you know, it's told by somebody like you know mm -hmm. the autobiography. Michael Max says like the autobiography. It's told by Alex Taylor. Yeah. Or even like you know, Slug or Boys Life Master Costume. That's Tony Lewis autobiography, but it's written by you know Kevin Reeves. So like I want somebody to write mine. I'm kind of lazy. I'm right. Little, I'm dedicated. I'm a little lazy sometimes. Write some notes in your phone. Be like, hey. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, the mission on supporting people, brands, and just supporting people and what they do, like, how does that work for you? I think that's what we charge with Coco. You mm -hmm. gotta realize, um, coming from the communities we come from, and even looking like us, period. There's not many of us that own things, and you know, right. we we all know that. Um, we can look around to like. The CEOs of the Fortune 500 companies, there's not too many women. I think it's a small percentage of women, that alone, and then men, black men, you know, that's even a small number. So that's just that represents the company. Mm -hmm. And then we look into what owns this company, like the NFL. Yeah. The NFL has no majority black ownership, mm -hmm. you know? But it's what, like 70% black as a, as a lead. Yeah. But we have no black ownership. Mm -hmm. So something that big, I'm transitioning it to like a smaller scale that we have to develop because that's exactly what we're charged with. Right. Like even the shirt I got on, like Eugene Wade. Yeah. Like I, this guy, right? I could play basketball with this guy growing up. And you know, yeah. he's starting like his own little like apparel line. Like why not support? Yeah. Outside of like the initial buying of the product, mm -hmm. it costs you no money to support your friend, your family, or somebody you know through the wayside brand. Right. It costs zero money to me. Like, you know, I could scroll on Instagram after this interview take a screenshot and literally post it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't cost us any more, right. any, any money. I mean, what, our likes might go down. We might go from getting, what, 300, 200 right. likes to like 15, 20, 20 mm -hmm. likes. Even that, that's like a faulty narrative to me, but I'm not gonna get into it. But it costs us nothing to promote people's brand. Mm -hmm. And I think it's something that uh, we all should do and we should all should do more of because to all of us are free, none of us are free. Yeah. Like none of us have a large amount of success until we all have it. Yeah. So why not like, you know, support your yeah, support yeah. your people in every in every aspect. Like even like, you know, we spoke prior to it, you all were talking about E Greedy, like mm -hmm. that's my mind, real my mind. And when he had this vision, I said bad. Like, you know, you don't have to say too much to me mm -hmm. when it comes to me supporting you. Yeah. That's like, you know, as I said earlier, like we're charged with that. And I believe that we should all do it. Growing up, my father always preached to me about being a man's man. Mm -hmm. And you know, I was with him. And I see him show a lot of people love in a way like it just trickled down to me, like, you know, from my life. Like, even if I see you, like I told you, you said, yo, like, you know, I recorded people. I said, come on. And like, I mentioned to you everybody I seen. And you were surprised. Like, you seen all that? That's what I do. Like, yeah. I don't just use Instagram to like pictures. I use Instagram and all the other social media platforms to see what people are doing and to see how I can support them, when I can support them, or how to even link them with other people. Because that's another component of me wanting to support people. Um... I know you, you record, you want to be a host, right? Yeah. I might link you with somebody I know who wants to be like a radio personality. Mm -hmm. 
or somebody I know who wants to be an actor. I said, you know what, y'all two get together because that's what we need. Yes. One is millennials, two is, you know, black people. We need to do that because oftentimes we can't accomplish our goals alone and we need to start building teams. So right. if I link Coco with, you know, Susan and Bob and Silas, if I can link all you all together, you all can probably accomplish your goals faster and Coco can do to do alone. I'm going to share a small story, I guess, before we transition topics. Um, my mentor, he has a book I kind of mentioned earlier, his name is uh, Tony Lewis, and it's called Slug, A Boy's Life in the Age of Mass Incarceration. Mm -hmm. When I travel, if I don't have to like read anything specific, when I travel, I travel with the book, I travel with Slug. Yeah, I've read Slug like three times, but I travel with Slug not because I need to go read the chapter again. I mean, I'm pretty That's well versed with the chapters. I read it because like I never know who I'm gonna sit beside on the plane. Mm -hmm. I never know who I'm gonna come, in, you know, I'm gonna come across that might need Slug the book. Mm -hmm. I'm doing that, like, you know, for my man. Like, I travel right. with slugs because I never know. I know how much the book means to my big homie. So, wherever I go and wherever I can support it to, that's why I had that copy with. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, you know, I think we should always support our people. That's what we charge with when we continue to grow in our lives. Right. Listen, Kitty B got the words. <laughs> like, hey, just live you, a little yes, bit of life. Right, for real. Because a lot of people are not really into you know support there are people so stuck on instagram and having likes and they're not really into helping other people they're into their own image and not really trying to help other people you know elevate and do the things they want to do but support definitely support your friends because got to i mean because at the end of the day even if you make it and your friends don't i've heard from multiple people with a lot of money that it's no fun being a millionaire if you have no one to spend their money with so mm -hmm. don't lose all your friends don't lose yourself in the process of chasing the bag i'm telling you seriously so how do you feel about community work community work you know you called me and asked me about when you called me and asked me, you seen the turkey drive i was surprised you yeah. Said the turkey drive. yeah yeah um again it's like supporting your people it's something we charge with like how old are you i'm 21 21 and where you from charlotte charlotte like so Think about the people, Charlotte's like, you know, in a building, a little urban city. Um, so think about the youngins growing up in Charlotte and all the, you know, the disadvantages that they that they have to see. Mm -hmm. A part of me, you know, like, you know, being from D.C., you know, going to high school in, like, Maryland and coming to North Carolina for college and what, I'm in grad school in Miami. Like, me being around different parts of the world, I was able to realize everywhere has bad neighborhoods. Everywhere has, like, the trenches. Everywhere has, you know, single mothers. Everywhere has suburbs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how people react in them searching in them different circumstances are different. But I've realized everybody has them. Yeah. So when, when we were blessed like me and you to, you know, go further our education and have the opportunity to be away from home. Because, I mean, you could name 10 of your friends right now that you know still in Charlotte. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. You can name more than 10. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying how fast you can name 10. Mm -hmm. You know, and I can do the same. I'm aware everybody doesn't get this opportunity. You know, different circumstances, different things happen. So us, you know, like even us being here in front of the interview, like think about how many of your friends didn't get a chance to attack, you know, go after their dreams like you are, right? Mm -hmm. So in saying that, I just want to know, we charge with that. We need to give the hope to the, you know, to the younger kids, let them know, like, you know what, we come from this. Right. You can do this too. And outside of that, like the turkey thing, the turkey, uh, the turkey drive I had on Miami, mm -hmm. I'm blessed with some amazing friends. I'm blessed with an amazing network. That's willing to help out whenever they can. Absolutely. So I know, you know, the community of Little Haiti, like they struggling on Miami. You know, it was right in between like Liberty City, Little Haiti, and everything like that. You know, some rough neighborhoods. You know, the families can need a little push whenever they can. So why not help? Mm -hmm. So you know, I got some friends together. I applied for a grant. I was able to get over like two thousand dollars, and and with that money, I bought a hundred turkeys, four hundred uh, four hundred uh, non-perishable items, and outside of that, I had like twenty people volunteer, which I think was solid too. And wow. everybody's trying to get on a mission of community work. Because our people need that. So right. I don't care if I get a billion dollars today. I'm still helping my people because that's what I'm charged with. Right. You know, like, I know no matter where I go in life, like, that's where I come from. I still right. have family that lives in, you know, that lives in situations where they need help. Mm -hmm. Period. Yeah. And I think a false narrative we get in is that only the youth need us. No, it's people. It's a people. It's a human issue. Everybody mm -hmm. needs help. So I don't think... It isn't an issue to, you know, people always be like, man, you're, you helping the youngest, man. That's an amazing thing. Mm -hmm. I, let me know where I can help the youngest. Us helping the youngest don't mean nothing if we can't find opportunities and pathways for their parents. Right. Because if we can't help their parents, then we can't help them because their parents are not going to be able to provide 
different resources, you know, their parents gonna resort to it like they don't need to. And it's just additional trauma that will come with that. So if you're in position, it's a human issue. You're not supposed to forget, period. And even if you don't come from that, you have to be able and be aware and be cognizant of the fact that it exists. You can't put it past. Because if you can't physically be on the front line, you have to do something financially that's gonna help yeah. the people on the front line do what it is they need to do. Right. That's the last thing when it comes to community work. I feel like everybody feel like they can do something on the front line. Yeah, you can, but if that's not your thing, don't get into it. Right. If you have the financial resources, give that to somebody or a person who is on the front line to help them push the message forward and you know, it'd be stronger and more, you know, better output for the community. Right. Yeah. That is that's so true. Sure. A lot of people need to go into community work and because I just started well, I'm not gonna say just started, but I was um like working with this organization called Simply United Together. They mm -hmm. were like volunteer like football games at the Panther Stadium, but like still try to like give out. They do turkey drives too. I can deal with that too, but they do a lot and they do a lot with the communities, like with celebrities and stuff. So to volunteer. You got to. Work. Like it's, it's, we're charged with yeah. that. Like, it's a human issue. So returning and showing love to your institution. Nah, that's what like, we at. Like I state, where we at foundation. I yes. My sophomore year. <laughs> yes. So how do you feel being back? Um, I believe when I'm at Winston, you miss it. I, you know, I think when you get to what I'm getting, we're gonna have this conversation again when you what two to three years out of college. Mm -hmm. I don't miss it as much because I believe I did everything I needed to do while I was here. Mm -hmm. Play football, you know, did fraternities. Mm -hmm. I built a lot, you know, I built a lot of friendships. I was an SGA, like, you know, like I did yeah. everything I could do. Went to all the parties. I didn't do anything <laughs> where I sat back and were like, dang, I wish I did that in college. Mm -hmm. Maybe study abroad. I wish mm -hmm. I could have did, but, you know, I was a student body vice president, and, you know, I needed to be here and I played football, so I needed to be here, so I didn't have really time to do it. But other than that, I don't regret anything about my college career. So when it was time to end, I was at peace with it ending. Like, yeah. okay, this was here. I built my, you know, legacy in a way here. Now it was time to move on. And my real life is still fun. Mm -hmm. Like, um, I don't regret things going on in my real life. Like, I find ways to continue to stay motivated and continue to live a good life. So I don't miss it. Of yeah. course, some days when you might be sitting in your apartment alone, you think about like, dang, like, you know, when I was in college, like, you call up your friends and like send them us chilling at you know, the union right now. Like, mm -hmm. As you might miss the moments here and there, but I don't miss it. And again, like Winston has done a lot for me, it opened a lot of doors, you know. It polished up a kid that, you know, didn't get invited to every college. Mm -hmm. It polished me up. It gave me championship rings. Mm -hmm. um, it allowed me to work on my skills of being a public speaker mm -hmm. and increased my, you know, skills as being like, you know, a philosopher. Like, Winston did that. Mm -hmm. It allowed me the space where I can meet people, yeah. you know, meet people to help me elevate to the next series of life, you know. Mm -hmm. It's friends here that might end up being in my wedding one day. You know, that I met at Winston. Mm -hmm. It's administrators here that help me realize, like, what it is that I can become right. through, like, simple conversations. Mm -hmm. um, so I owe that to Winston. So anytime I can come back and show love to my institution, like, I wish I would have a certain amount of money or have a resource that I can offer to Winston. Like, I got a degree in political science. Mm -hmm. I wish I would like have a, a pathway where political science majors can come and get an internship at the Hill mm -hmm. or something. Like, and I didn't offer it. Mm -hmm. Or if I had, you know, if I was in a place financially where I can, you know, give like a donation of like $10,000 a month to the political science department and I'm not. Mm -hmm. Like, that's an obligation, again, that we all owe to our institution. Whether you had, you know, I hate when people give little excuses like the financial aid office didn't treat me right. It happens at every school. Like, right. Don't just look at the smallest thing and you complain mm -hmm. and then get mad mm -hmm. when this institution makes a decision. Right. And that doesn't even affect you for one, but it's in a popular opinion. Right. You get mad when the institution makes it, but you're not giving back your time, you're not giving back your money, you're not giving back your resource. How can you do that? Okay, so how would you feel you handle like the essence of relationships and like the power that you get when with friendships, relationships, and any type of relationships you have with anybody? Um, I think you gotta be intentional, mm -hmm. most part. You gotta know what every friendship is for. Um, I think oftentimes we get so engulfed about being loyal, like, and I'm a loyal guy for sure, but I think we get so engulfed about being loyal, we think it's a fault to have, to understand and be aware that we have different friendships for different things. Mm -hmm. Um, think about it, I can ask you right now, if you find, like, you know, but if you 
you found out you're having a baby right now, who are the first three people you would call? Friends, outside of your mother, outside of your father, who are the first three people you would call? Ari, uh -huh. Kennedy, and Lala. Okay. So Complex offers you a deal right now to be a host of, like, to be DJ Academics co-host of uh, Obsession, like, Everyday Struggle. Mm -hmm. Who are the first three people you would call? The same. The same three people. That's cool. That's a good thing. So I'm assuming if you got, like, a free vacation, those are the first three people you would call? Oh, yeah, definitely. So cool. So that's a, that says you have, a, like, a standard circle. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've learned, though, from my experiences, as you continue to grow, those people might change. It's because, and that's, a, that's not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. It just comes in the fact that you all interest level are different. Like, mm -hmm. you know, because like if Complex calls you and say, you know, but I need you to bring three people on that's going to help you build this up. Mm -hmm. Are those three people the same? That's going to help you build that show <laughs> and build your brand on that's what, Now, that's my question. Yeah. <laughs> that's what, that was my question. Like, will them three people help you succeed in building that show? Mm -hmm. For real? And if they do, that's solid. Mm -hmm. But from my experiences, for me, that's just haven't you know, been like that. You try to out me, kidding me? No, that's what, it's not outing you though, but it's healthy for us to be aware and conscious of it. Wow. Like if I have, if I pick five friends to come in here and we joke, we rem I have five friends for that. Mm -hmm. Um, I can call five friends that I know like, you know what, if, if I need advice, if I need counseling or something like, you know, that I want a goal I want to attack, I'm going to call them. But it might not be the same people if I go on a vacation and Hove told me I can use a private jet. You know, I get it. It might not be the same five people I'm calling. And that's mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. We're people. We have different, you know, it's not like we, I wouldn't say we're using them, but my big homie once told me a quote, if someone's not, if someone can't be used, they're not useful. Mm -hmm. And it's not like you're using your friends, but we're at a level we all trying to see, we all trying to win, you know? We can't afford too many mistakes or slip-ups. Like, you got to examine the way people act around you and how they treat, how they treat your own brand. Mm -hmm. And being like and being aware of that you know, it's okay to know like everybody or every friend isn't for every situation mm -hmm. and that's just a fact like i can't go to the dinner with barack obama and bring the same three friends i'm bringing if i'm going you know so i'm going to a backyard yeah. concert you know what i'm saying yeah. like it's just in a one day it could be like that one day you know i can have I, hopefully i had the resources where i can help different friends reach that level but as of right now not nah, like i'm going into who i can go in with your strongest troops mm -hmm. in different avenues and again, that's not a bad thing. I just think we have to be aware. Like you, even you said, like Kenny, you try and out me. No, <laughs> and it's no disrespect to any of your three friends, but in them respecting you, they have to honor. Like if Coco is going to be this, and when she is this, we have to understand that her circle is going to expand, her circle is going to grow, and all of us might not be here for this specific situation, and that's fine. I think sometimes I've learned in life, and I had to, you know, I had to learn this. I tried to bring people into situations that they weren't ready for at the time. And it wasn't their fault. They wasn't ready. Mm -hmm. It's just, and I wouldn't even call it my fault for trying to bring my friend in a situation, but they weren't ready. Mm -hmm. So you have to go into it again with your strongest troops. And um, so that's one level of it. Two, it's to just be open and honest with your friends. Um, I think that's healthy. Mm -hmm. I got a group chat with my good men. Like, I think we talk about it every day. I got two group chats I actually talk about. Not a big group chat, but I got two just One, I'm going to shout out one. It's the barber shop, man. I know. You want to shop? You shop. I know you probably heard about the shop before. But yeah. Shout out the shop. You know that that chat is like it provides my comedy throughout the day, right? Mm -hmm. So that's like the healthy side of it. You know, when you're going through your trials and tribulation today, you go in the barber shop and like, they talking about it. They lying about right. it, right? Right. <laughs> that's one. And then another one I have is with uh, my guys. You know, shout out Tony, shout out Silas, shout out Ed, shout out Fran. Like we talk every day in that chat mm -hmm. about you know literally talk. We be audio. You know, wow. you did audio messages, yeah, you know. Mm -hmm. Tony and Silas, they like 40, so we have them audio. <laughs> they like 40, they're like 35, 35, So we have an audio message, mm -hmm. you know, getting hip to the times. But yeah. We talk about everything in that chat. We go over advice. We go over like plans, you know, counseling, like, you know, things that actually going on in the real world. Mm -hmm. And I'm about the age range. Like, I'm the youngest in the chat. I'm 24. Silas so might be like 36, and in between, Tony, 35, age 25, Fran, like 26. You know, that's the ages of us all in the chat. But we help each other out daily in that, and that's needed. Because sometimes I think we need friends. Like some people yeah. who be out here, like we need friends. And um, we need friends not only to congratulate us on our successes, but even to check us sometimes when we kind of losing ourselves yeah. in a way. And I have that, like, you know, Cal, you know, Cal, that's my man. Yeah. Like I talk to Cal, like me and Cal probably literally talk every day. And even if sometimes the conversation be extended too long, but we yeah. talk every day, like, you know. 
and I think that's healthy. Like still maintaining the relationships and knowing what the relationships for. Yeah. Like I know when me and Cal talk, our conversation might go every. It's just that's what it is. Me yeah. and Cal gonna talk about how we gonna get a million dollars. Me and Cal gonna talk about prior memory. Me and Cal gonna laugh at something we see on Instagram. But yeah. that's what we do. It goes everywhere. Mm-hmm. And there's even some people like I just talk to them just to see how they doing. Like mm-hmm. you know, like I got two cousins I talk to. Like we don't even talk about like we talk about future plans. Mm-hmm. We don't even talk about our day to day. Yeah. We just talk about future plans and just to make sure we like doing all right. So shout out my cousin DZ, shout out my cousin Will. Like I make sure these relationships stay healthy. Mm-hmm. I call my mother every day. Like you know, I think yeah. sometimes we forget that essence. Mm-hmm. Like I call my mother every day. Like hey, what's up? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, you good? Like you know, we talk while she at work. We talk while yeah. she on her way to work. We we talk every day. I call I Facetime my grandma. I don't just Facetime her because like just Me see, see too. how she like, I Facetime like <laughs> the fact that like my grandma was like sixty and I can have her Facetime. Like we Facetime mm-hmm. every day. I think just keeping them relationships up. Right. It's just healthy for a person, period, and you know, it helps you in a way stay sane, like in your everyday life, knowing these people still here for you. Right. Knowing that uh you still getting the support you need. Cause we all need it. We all need a sense of fulfillment. But that's yeah. how like I maintain them. To answer your question, I know what every relationship is for. I know what I you know, what I need. And not also what I need is but I know what I need to provide to my friends as a friend. Right. Sometimes we just want things received from friends. Right. But I know what I need to provide as a friend, and that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna support. Period. Like, whether you're like, oh, okay, how you doing, or whether, oh yeah, we gonna get a bag. Like, literally a bag. Like my guy Celine, we was just together. Celine got a book bag line coming up. You see, it's gonna support your people. Wow. But Celine got a book bag line coming up. Me and Celine, like Celine, talking to me. We talk probably like once or twice a week about the book bag line, about what he plans to do with it. And again, I don't. It's not like I need anything from Celine or Celine needs anything from me. That's just my guy. Like, what what yeah. you need from me? What kind of support you need? Like, I'm not giving no financial support right now. I'm not on the street, like you know, selling his bags. But my guy, like, what you like, you know, you need support. Like, yeah, my G, you about to sell a million bags. Like, if that's the yeah. smallest thing you could do on the phone, do it. Yeah. And that's how you maintain your relationships. And then, I think the last component of it, when you start to see relationships fall off, don't be sad. Right. And I don't want to sound like a super ultra dark person saying no, but that, it's, it's but it's real. true because, yeah. like as I said, as the times progress, situations change, and that's just like how the leaves fall, right? How the oh. leaves fall, situations. You know, I'm a <laughs> but no, that's uh, how situations honestly change. I mean, you grow up, mm-hmm. and sometimes in growing up, relationships distance itself. Like right. you know, it's like a race a little bit. You know, you might speed up five miles per hour. Sometimes y'all be going five. Those yeah, and I wouldn't even say shut them off like you cutting them off. Yeah. But sometimes if you see a situation falling, you can't always go back and save it because you might be missing somebody you pose a meter, 32 meters. Yeah. Like say if you and your friend start off at a 15 meter race, mm-hmm. y'all both 15, and you leap up to 21, and they are like 17, but you still there. And that's still your friend. Like you still have that love, and that love will never go anywhere because yeah. the times and the memories will always be good. But you can't always reach back at 17. Because you're supposed to meet somebody, you're supposed to reach a, reach a level of achievement at 25. And if you go back to 17, you delay in your own process. Right. And ain't nobody stopping my process, though, bro. Like, you can't let it. Right. And um, you just got to trust that that love will be there. And um, a friend will know, like, that love's going to be there and that love will never die. Out. And you can't even treat the situation like you get. When you do get to 27 and they might be a 19, you can't treat that like that. Mm-hmm. That love is going to be there, but you can't, like, focus and be like, you know, Strut out because the relationship didn't go anymore. That's so real. Where's some Kimmy B? Where's some Kimmy B? He's keeping it real. Let's be real, TV. Let's be real, man. We gotta do what we gotta do. Seriously. So, uh, back to the Super Bowl goals. Do you have a podcast? I'm like, tell me more about that. Yeah, you know, I got the podcast. Uh, it's called Super Bowl Goals. We talk about everything. Mm. Um, and I also know, like, when it comes, you have to get me into podcasts. A, you gotta get in a podcast. Really? We're gonna talk about that. Like, yeah. So, Super Bowl goes to podcast. It's literally a five minute podcast. Mm. And I drop it maybe like three to four days, like in a row. And then I do it like five weeks. Mm. And with doing that, you know, I grew up playing sports. I played football in college here at Winston. Practice days were broken down. So, we had a film session in which we studied and like studied our opponent and, you know, was fully aware who we were playing during the week. And we had a full pass practice, we had a walkthrough, we had game day. Each day was designed for something different, mm-hmm. though our theme was the same. And that's what Super Bowl goes to podcast is centered around. Mm-hmm. Monday, like Monday or Tuesday, whatever day I started on, we would learn the issue during the week. Like I know one time we talked about, I talked about team chemistry. 
So I broke down this whole little process. We just spoke about like relationships. Mm-hmm. I spoke about that on Super Bowl for the podcast. I talked about ways and methods to analyze your own crew. Mm-hmm. Um, then I talked about ways to practice it like day by day. Yeah. And then the last day, like on game day, I talked about a way like to continue your life going as it. Mm-hmm. Like Super Bowl goes the podcast. Like my intent isn't to give you life's answers. Mm-hmm. My intent is to give you the the time and the space to think and reflect. Because I think sometimes we get engulfed with our own day, get engulfed with our own dreams and goals, that we forget to sit down and actually reflect and think about what it is that's going on. And that's what Super Bowl goes is for. You sit down and reflect about, you know, I want people to think about what's going on. I know one time we talked, spoke about um, supporting people. I spoke about uh, geez, I'm kind of thinking about embracing your own flaws, like mm-hmm. stuff like that. So I want people to sit down and reflect, like, you know, what is it that I'm, you know, scared of? What is my fears? Or how, what, you know, what am I, why am I not thinking about my future? That's the intent of Super Bowl Goals, the podcast. Like I mentioned earlier in the interview, I want people to realize, like, whatever it is that's stopping them from holding their hands on their head, thinking about their championship, that's what Super Bowl Goals, the podcast is intended for, right there. To sit down and reflect and think for five minutes a day, and then you move on with your day, literally. It's not one of them long podcasts. And there's no disrespect to anybody that has a long podcast. It's just not long. Like, you know, I'm typically myself. I heard Tim Ferriss, he's a famous podcast book and guy and author. He said his podcast is a scratch his own itch. And that's what mine is for. Like, literally, like, I talk, like, my podcast is a coping me- mechanism for me to literally talk to myself, like, talk my trials and tribulations out to myself. And then me talking it out to myself is for the world to hear. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's real. <laughs> really, though, that's real. That's real. So, any new goals and how do you go about attacking those goals and putting yourself to doing what you need to do in order to get what you want to do? Um, I got a couple small goals going on. Like, one of my dreams is to have my own big multi-million like, dollar management company. Mm. So it's like we're managing like million dollar accounts every year. Um, so that's one of them. So that's a goal I'm working on, like, big time. That's big picture, right? But if we talk a small picture, I'm working on this thing called, like, we not local. Well, we ain't local no more is what it's called. And so it's like, you know, I'm kind of doing like, you know, I'm telling my inner Coco, like, I'm having a conversation, <laughs> you know, telling my inner Coco, I'm having a conversation with people that, that that aren't currently in their hometown or home state and just asking them, like, how do they navigate through that space? I know my first one, I did like a week or two ago, mm-hmm. I did with my guy, uh, Monte Mitchell, on my hand, he's from VA. So when we did the first one, it was pretty good. It hasn't released yet anything. But I'm just doing that just to highlight, you know, everyday people mm-hmm. that, like, that's doing their thing in a specific, you know. State like they don't will for themselves, and I'm rapping, I'm an athlete, and I'm an ultra you know, entrepreneur yet. Mm-hmm. But they're gonna be the people we're gonna know about in the future. Like, right. so I did my guy Monte first, like, he's gonna be a guy we're gonna know about in the future. Mm-hmm. So, you know, kind of like trying to prophesize it in a way, like, yeah, these are the people y'all gonna meet before yeah. they that person. So, you know, that's what we ain't local no more is. No more local, right? we ain't local no more is. I know a couple of just small things, you know, trying to build on with the team. Exactly, you know, continue to push the way with supporting people. I'm mm-hmm. um, also working on, you know, in terms of music, my little brother, he on his grind. His name Keon Doe, you know, he's rap out of DC. You know, it's really important for me to help him build his career because like yeah. that's what he loves to do. And um yeah, supporting those brands and supporting you know those what I mean? people. Like, but you know, that's what he loves to do. And like outside of just trying to support him and see his dreams come through. Like that's my real little brother. Like I seen him. You know, grow up, and he's probably one of the people that seem to say that he's literally watching me grow. So, um, seeing him, you know, do what he you know, do what he loves to do, and helping him any way I can. Um, I remember mean, when I was losing weight, like when I was running every morning. I put on my Instagram his song, "How Can We Lose? How Can I Lose?" And I started from nothing. People would literally hit me up, like, "Yo, what song is that?" Like, any way I can do it. Period. Mm-hmm. I want to see Keon win. Like, I want to go on tour with Keon when he headlining it. I probably even headlining. You know, I love the process of things. Mm-hmm. I want to go. Or maybe he's like opening it for Kanye, like mm-hmm. opening for Shaq Glizzy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like opening for Shaq Glizzy on tour, mm-hmm. like free meat, like opening for Meek on tour. Like you know, right. we you know he with the chases, mm-hmm. and they go from opening to like you know headline his own shows into which he can continue to bring the brand of his DG Truth, and you know have Leak though and little baby swiping like to where he can put his team on to where he's in position to win. Mm-hmm. So right now, like you know, really trying to help Keon put his career off. So outside of them three. Um, that's my three biggest things besides, like, you know, besides small things. But uh, that's the mission we're on right now. Um, and then, like, outside of the how go about attacking my goals? Yeah. I'm so focused now, Coco. It's crazy. Like, that weight loss really helped me realize how, like, yeah, it was a big thing. And I will never take it for granted. But it also helped me realize, like, um, 
how focused, when you're really focused, mm -hmm. how you can attack a goal and how can it come with ease. So the three things I do, I write it down. Mm -hmm. Write my goal down. I speak it to myself. Mm -hmm. Then I give myself a line of credit with. Mm -hmm. So a line of credit, you know when you pay your credit card bill, you use your credit card, you got to pay it. To, yeah. So if I like write something down and I don't do it, I have a consequence for myself. Like who would like, say let's just use the management company. If I didn't send an email as I was supposed to for somebody that I want to represent, mm -hmm. um, I won't go. And I love to play basketball every day. Mm -hmm. I won't go play basketball every day. I, like, I punch myself. Mm -hmm. Or, like, you know, like, I won't eat my favorite food. Or I won't eat something I want to eat because, like, I didn't do my drink. So I punish myself. So it's like a, a self of, like, holding yourself, like, accountable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's what I do. And that's how I go about attacking them. Mm -hmm. I speak it, I write it, and allow myself my own line of credit. Mm -hmm. so that's how I attack it. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Whew. Okay, we have two minutes on this. Um, I don't even, dang, that's deep. You're deep. I'm just in my it is though. real though, because like you've taken like things that you've been through and like molded them into like life lessons and you're actually like living through those life lessons in every day, like bettering yourself to like, you better in every day and help other people. Got I mean, what we reveal, we heal. Right. For real, like. <laughs> <laughs> nah, for real though. Like, what we reveal about ourselves, we ultimately end up healing. Like, um, you know, I believe in like embracing everything about your life. Like, like I said earlier, everybody has trenches. Everybody grew up through the struggle. You know, I think we realize that we stop judging people in ways, and that's like the space I'm on now, yeah. and the space I'm in. So, um, you know, just knowing that like it's easier to navigate through my daily life. It's like growing up in like DC in the Maryland area. Like, we did, we joked on each other. Like, so I come and Joan in battle. Like, I know you're gonna say I'm Boston, and at the time it was really big. So I know you're gonna say I'm like fat. Like, so what joke you gonna say now? Like, now I'm ready because I got like five more jokes because I know you're three. Mm -hmm. So, like, embrace your flaws. So, like, what you, if you know, like, you know, you want to be a, you know, on air personality, you know your flaws. Mm -hmm. So now, if you go to an interview, yeah, I know I'm weak at this, but this is I'm really good at. Yeah. And not only knowing that you're weak at them, but improving them because, you know, like, you know, you're spending the extra hours and working on that. You gotta embrace it. That's what it's about. Embrace your flaws. Embrace everything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, Kenny B, that was a great listen. I gotta appreciate you for real. I appreciate you. Yeah. So. You holding the institution down. Trying. You know, it's so. I respect you. Like, it's so cool. Like, seeing everything that you've done. Like, especially with your turkey drive. Like. I was like, damn, that's so cool. Like, just people like coming from Winston out here doing stuff for people and like, especially less fortunate people because I've been in that situation before. You know, when I was younger, my mom, she had single mothers and you're just really about helping people and just like bettering yourself every day. And I respect that. Seriously. And I appreciate you highlighting everybody's story from the institution. Thank that's you. A I mean, what I said, like, I love to see what like complex or we create our own little media company and create our own media company and we own it all. No one promote it. Yeah. All oh, them and no one promote it. So mm -hmm. I definitely appreciate you. So everybody, Super Bowl goals. Super we ain't Bowl local goals. no more. Seriously. <laughs> we on a whole new low. All that. Right. Know? And embrace everything. Right. So do you have any like Instagram, social media you want to do? Yeah, about? my Instagram is at the Kitty B. It'll be down here. <laughs> T-H-E-K-E-N-N-Y-B. Um, uh, Twitter, I have a Twitter. I need to get more active on it, so y'all need to hold me accountable and get me more active. But it's uh, at Kenny B. Higher Ed. Kenny B. Higher Ed, but I need to be more active on Twitter. But I am. I do love Instagram. That's the Kenny B. T H E K E N N Y B. It'll be down there. Well, thank you so much for tuning in to Let's Be Real. Hope you like the new setting. Comment, Let's be rate. real. Yeah, let's be real. We Super Bowl goals. goals. Yes, Super Bowl goals. goals. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, well, thank you so much. You. No problem. See you next time. Let's be real.